okay we can see the bank we can see this moving um, the speed the altimeter this these two SAI ADI are both working right and then as the uh, angle of attack is going up and down right HSI is moving hey everyone welcome back to Simpit Academy so in this new playlist the A10C uh, it's quite different from the F15 Eagle playlist where I've completed building the entire Strike Eagle cockpit. Um, let's take a look at how this is different in some ways. So in the first video of the A10, I tested the monitor setup. So the main console has many panels and I started with the instruments. I'm working backwards as explained in the previous video. We do the main console, do the MR experience, make sure we like it. Then we go back to the left and right console. Okay, and the main con for the main console, we are starting with the instruments before we add all this okay um so in the first video we see that um, this monitor doesn't have anything covered up the only thing that is covered is are the displays mft state the instruments the, the background is all transparent so it is like this for every aircraft Right, some of the panels will even be transparent within it, um, but most of them, thankfully, the instruments are covered up. Especially when you have now um, a wood painted gray covering up most of this, and then I 3D printed um, the gauges uh, bezel. And the white letters are embossed and uh, painted with a white marker. Okay, this is the same way I've been using uh, when I built the uh, Strike Eagle. Okay, so see all the instruments are done. Um, the fuel quantity, the flaps are not, the HCP are not, but instrument wise, everything is done, even the this um, engine display stack okay so to achieve this instrument and later the whole main console uh, to enjoy this in mixed reality we need a couple of things all right it seems like a lot but um, it's not complicated Right, you just need to digest this and do accordingly, and you'll be able to do this MR for any aircraft. I've tested it for um, the F 15E, now the A 10, the F 18, even Microsoft Flight Simulator. All right, so MR works with Open Eboard Virtual Desktop, um, it will work. So obviously, Helios doesn't work for Microsoft. Uh, just for this yes so within this first step it's I suppose the most tedious complicated um, you have FreeCAD you have Arduino and this is BIOS so this one is to build the panel this one is to do the wiring and put the DCS code in the Arduino IDE and compile okay and then that's it it, it runs and whatever switch you operate it will mirror in the game so this is the first um, episode in my f15 e playlist where i went into detail about how to wire every kind of switch potential meters push buttons um, rotary encoders 
toggle switches, you know, stuff like that. So um, you can watch that. Now, this one is to put everything together, all the steps, and I sh went into great detail about how to make mixed reality working. So in this one, in this video, I'm, I will go a bit faster and not have to repeat everything in, in detail. Now, this one, I have another video, episode 26, about um, Helios. So again, the this example is a three screen, okay? Main monitor, instruments, and then even a UFC, like here, okay? So main monitor here, sorry, main monitor here, instruments here, and then the UFC, it's like in front of the second monitor. So the various combinations, again, this can be applied to any aircraft. So FreeCAD, um, once you learn FreeCAD, uh, you, can, you can create panels, even design knobs um, for any aircraft, any panel. All right, so FreeCAD is free uh, and it's easy, right? You draw a square, you draw a circle and you pad it upwards and then you get this. All right, obviously you draw some holes and then to take it a step further, you can build something up like this. Um, you raise it up to house the encoder. I don't use any potential meters. Encoders are the smallest in size and you can squeeze in this, this tight um, real estate here. Okay, and I have to raise it up because if you are putting this over a monitor, you do not want the legs of any switch like poking into the, your monitor, right? So the only way is to go up and it doesn't matter how high you go up. It's not, it's not obvious at all, um, especially when it's pointed towards you. Okay, so don't worry, go, go as high as possible and then add some text. Um, so this one, sometimes more complicated ones is not a circle. You may have to cut. So um, I'll show you how to do this trimming. There's a trimming tool. All right. So these are the basics. Again, covered in my previous videos. And I've shown at least 10, 20 examples already from the F-15 uh, cockpit building many many examples so if you watch them you will um, learn all the tricks okay of using FreeCAD so okay before I switch to this let me let me give a demo on um, FreeCAD so this is already built up I just want to show you the main steps so you start with obviously um, if you are drawing something like this, it's much easier to have the center, uh, this origin thing at the center of everything. Then you just uh, draw the circle and draw everything around it. So when you are done, okay, you, you pad, all right? From flat, it goes up like this. Then this one, the base, Again, you draw a square and a hole and you pat, you get this, all right? So obviously the bottom is flush like this, nothing yet. So then you want to clear the bottom. You have a smaller circle, okay? This is the um, minimum size to squeeze in an encoder 15 and a half by 15 and a half okay so if you pocket this see now it goes in like this you just need one two mm to hold to secure the encoder without it dropping out and then the whole body goes in then this next step is you see the corners are pretty sharp you just fillet okay 4mm 
have a nice round thing. This one I don't bother filling and also I do not want to eat into the space here. Next we have the text. Okay, again my previous videos I've shown you how to use uh, how to create text. You start by going to the draft workbench. All right. When you're done, you need to move the text from the outside into the body and then you can pad. So you see this one appears and then the next one, this one appears. All right. And then we are done. Okay. And this same um, method can be applied to most of the instruments. They are um, doing this. They, they need a knob at one of the corners, all right? Some don't even have anything. So then when you're done, you just make sure you click the body and export and you become an STL. So then you use this, um, this tool to um, slice it, okay? Cura, I'm using Cura. So while that is loading, let me show you new body sketch XY plane. If you um have something like this and a circle, okay. So if you want to do this, then we can draw an arc, okay? We cross over, oops, that's too big. Okay, so you have to do measurement and set the distance, right? But you want to get rid of this, you just click on this. See? Um, this one you need to cross. Then trim, trim, voila, you're done. All right, so this is how you do trimming. Now this Cura thing, um, if you import Oh, I already have hit the STL um, Yeah, okay, let's All right, so without much details, you can go like low quality, okay? Most of the panels I do like standard quality, okay? And then you just uh, slice, okay? And depending on your printer, it might take a long time or not, then you save to this, okay? That's how you do that. So let's resume with um, the next step, which is Arduino, we have finished building and printing the panels. Now we want to wire. So assuming you have printed all these bezels for each. Okay. So you have to determine for these instruments, most of them are potential meters. This one is a push button. Okay. Both are push buttons. Everything else you see, it's two numbers, right? Because you need like a a plus minus for potential meter. If you are using, sorry, encoders. If you're using potential meter, you'll be analog, you'll be like A0, A1, A2, A3, and you need three wires instead of two. So, um, well, actually four, um, an analog and a signal and the ground. Anyway, so this one you have, you have plus minus and a ground and This one is also a push, 
I'm using encoder, so it's not a pull, uh, but rather a push. So majority of them are straightforward um, encoders. So we we have this year's BIOS for every aircraft. The code has been determined by other people. So it's copying and paste, right? You find the right aircraft, you find the right panel, and all the switches are there, you just copy. And then you name the number um, on your Arduino, um, which lines, which what number you are wiring to. So the default is potential media for some of them, like this ADI pitch and RWR here, right? So if you switch to advanced view, then you will see the encoder. So here this everything encoder and some push buttons. Okay, so when you are done, you can make sure that you state the right board, whether you are using um, nano or mega or any other kind of board. Then make sure you choose the right port. Okay, it will tell you when you plug in what additional port number appear, that is your port, um, your COM, whatever. Then you save and you click this upload. If there are no errors, um, you're good to go. If there are errors, one of my videos explain four or five possible reasons. Um, it will help you troubleshoot. All right, so when your DCS is up and running and not in paused mode, okay, uh, click on this connect serial COM port and you ask you for a port number, you enter it and then you'll start running. Okay, if you have multiple boards, the A10 will require, I think eight to 10 mega. Okay, mega has the most number of pins and still you need eight to 10 of them. So if you will need to run many boards, instead of running this serial one, you need to run uh, one that is called multi-port. Okay, it's a different icon that you save to the desktop. So anyway, this is how you do Arduino and DCS BIOS. So that is to operate all the switches, all the, right, all these knobs. Okay, all this DCS BIOS and Arduino will help you deal with the physical switches synchronized to the SIM. Right, for display, we just use the viewport and Helios. So here, now this one, open eboard, um, one of my previous videos showed in great detail how to do this. The main key thing is to make sure that you have a Word document, you use white rectangles, whatever, block out all this, then import into like uh, GIM and delete it, you know, uh, this space becomes clear, then save it as PNG. It must be PNG, it cannot be JPEG. Okay, JPEG will not work. So one you, once you have your PNG, you put it in the right um, folder, the right path, obviously the right aircraft. Okay, if you don't have this, create this folder, kneeboard, under your safe games, not your default C or D drive where your DCS is, is under your safe games, DCS have a folder called kneeboard and then the name of your aircraft, then put this pink PNG in there. Okay, when you start up, before you launch um, a mission, or before you click fly, you, you, might, you might see this, okay? So using one of the hotkeys to show or hide um, the kneeboard, once you click fly and this one will become passed through, okay? If you have done all the other things as well. So the next thing you need to do is to also set up this virtual desktop. Um, I'm using the Quest 3. I'm not sure about Pico or any other headset that has passed through. So um, 
you need to install this you need actually this is a payware you need to buy this it's only like i think 20 30 dollars i don't remember but anyway i had this virtual desktop under steam that's not not the right one you need one specifically for quest if you're using quest um headset okay buy it on the quest store then when you click on this guy this icon this will pop up and you need to click connect your computer need to connect to wi-fi first and also you need a desktop um, streamer app that runs on your pc in the background and you will connect to this app on the quest and if you click streaming you select this combination okay um the red and the blue and green is zero so you get this pink and here you need to make sure you check the uh configure stuff pass through all right so next is helios again one of my videos already showed in great detail so you always have a main monitor for the game and then you have a second monitor for your instruments um, assuming you are doing this for vr or mr so you you can have even more you can have another one for ufc or some small ones for your um mfds if you are not trying to place it you know over a um, an instrument monitor so i'm using this uh samsung super wide monitor um it's it's wide enough to go from edge to edge okay for me to display even this so that most people will just do this right and then they will leave this out or they build mechanical ones or they do another small um lcd and then viewport you know things like that but i'm able to squeeze in everything so i just need one monitor okay so i don't need to have another viewport um hdmi another you know screen and hdmi here so in helos basically you need three things you you select your aircraft okay this is the a a10 c2 not the a10 c a10 c2 and then the viewports okay the light blues are all the viewports if you are new to helios you select all your viewports normally mfds at minimum and whatever other displays okay the uhf repeater your digital clock your rwr cmsc um our viewports okay next you select your gauges you select your aircraft and all the panels or switches or in this case here all the gauges you select what you drag and drop right and then you can resize it um, so here we are not binding any switch it's all display either viewport display or gauge display all right so the third thing you need to do is by this by itself it doesn't do anything right it's just display on the screen you want the needles to move you want the horizon to move you want everything to move by itself you need to bind even your flaps right and your your fuel gauge so <clears throat> you need to bind um one side under here you see you have monitors and interfaces you not under monitor under interfaces and under your aircraft you need to scroll down to each um, panel or gauge okay and expand out you see all this stuff that are changed now this by default you'll be like this okay blank you need to click at the right one if you're trying to bind this click this okay so for this one we are binding the fuel quantity you click on this then all these options will appear and most of the time they you can tell this is total you drag this to here 
it then you will appear okay left to left right to right now a lot of times the description over here and the description under binding are totally different with only one uh, possible match uh, the a lot of times they are described um, in such a way that it doesn't make sense it doesn't seem to have anything to do with each other so you may have to guess and do try and error to figure out the the the, the binding all right so the good thing is um, the instruments I figured out and all of them work, even the small ones. So one thing special you need to do for the SAI is I noticed that it was going opposite. There's a, the, the actual one has like a knob, right? So to turn and this w2 the this w sign which represents your horizon to move it up and down when you turn the knob in the seam it goes up and then in my second monitor it goes down it was reversed okay and vice versa when i go down in the seam this one in the monitor goes up so it was reversed so i went to the discord for help and this very helpful and uh, knowledgeable guy matt creator 37 uh, kudos to him he showed me the solution which is he created a profile uh, which i copied from another helios um, session open and then just paste it in under the second monitors tab okay um, it's called SAI calibration. So two things you need to do. Number one, under monitor, not under interface, which is most of the time you use interface. Under monitor, you, if you pasted this, okay, um, this will appear. This is the, the whatever thing he created. It looks like this. You go to output, um, but this time you click on this. You don't click on this. You click on this SAI, the backup ADI. You click on it, you have all these options. You open up each adjustment offset. You drag this value over. Okay. Next, this is under monitor. Next, you go to interfaces, A10C. Go down to SAI. Under pitch adjust, you this time you select this one not the SAI select this calibration thing then this option of input will input set value will appear from the SAI interfaces A10 SAI you drag this over okay do this too do this one and this one and click and save and run your A10 profile and now you will work accordingly up and down will in your monitor and in the sim they will be synced in the right direction all right this was the only thing i needed to correct everything else is working so um a few more things to note whenever you are done with helios and you have to click this monitor setup and you will say configure your monitor whatever you have to click save whenever you click this it will mess up this okay it will change this my default um it's always 1920 and 1080 height and this equals to 1920 over 1080 1.7778 something so every time i click save monitor setup this thing gets defaulted to the old one the 1920 1080 so i have to retype this and also type this okay so in 2d that's all you need to do in vr if you want your viewports your mfds uh, everything to show in vr uh, obviously if you want mr you need to do vr so then you also have to add this now this mfd is for all mfds regardless of what it is called in your aircraft in the a10 it is called mfd in the f15e is called mpd in the f18 
it's called DDI. So it doesn't matter, this code is fixed. Always use this VR allow MFD, you know, equals true. Again, it gets uh, wiped out whenever you click monitor setup um, in Hedos, right? So always check this and um, retype this according to your second monitor uh, resolution and the aspect then always add this back i have another notepad open to copy and paste this copy and paste this all right then i have to retype and then click save all right also in your dcs before you run a mission you need to select a resolution that is the combination of all your monitors here i only have two the 1090 by 3440 so it's basically the combined height and combined width okay if you have four or five monitors it's the combination of all the height or the maximum height maximum maximum width okay next also your monitor is by default like one screen three screen whatever we are using helios profile so the under the monitor the drop down helios will appear and you want to select this without this tool okay it's your viewport or something is not going to work something is not going to show all right make sure you do this make sure you do this so moment of now the moment of truth is before we run everything you need to run a couple of things you need to start your this is the open keyboard just just click on it all right on either on the desktop or on your taskbar click on it launch this this is your helios okay this one the control center select up and down select find your aircraft and click start okay obviously your monitor all need to be connected and running okay if not you will say error so start open kneeboard start helios start your dcs now before you start your dcs it's preferred that you run multi-threaded the the basic the default is bin highly recommended you do the other one the bin dash empty multi-threading and or add this line okay with a space here okay see there's a space Add a space and then dash force enable VR and then again space force open XR. So add this in your uh, properties. Okay, right click properties and then open up this. Make sure you add this. So three things. Fourth thing is when when DCS is running, you load a mission and let it run, not in paused mode. Okay, let it run. While it is running, go to your desktop, assuming you have saved it, save a shortcut to your desktop. Click on the serial uh, COM port icon and enter the port number if you have only one board. Okay, and then this will start running. If this is running, this is running. If it's not running or there's an error, you will know. Okay, so if all these are done, then you will have um, VR and the pass through mixed together, um, the, and you experience the magic of uh, mixed reality. All right, so let's take a look. Okay, we are in the a10C and as you can see this is mixed reality we have the virtual world around us a wonderful A10 with a lot of Mavericks and then you can see the virtual world down there the sky the hills and we can see our physical front console <clears throat> the this box drawn by the open knee board and enabled by virtual desktop and 
as from the previous video the whole console wasn't covered at all it was just a monitor now I have a board right with some cutout holes and I even printed uh, 3d printed the panels so now it's looking more like um, a front console for the A10 these were cutouts um, that will be replaced with like toggle switches and all kinds of stuff but um, the 34 inch wide monitor it's perfect in terms of height it's not too high um, and it's just wide enough to squeeze in the two extremes the flaps as you can see a bit of the monitor edge uh, which will not be visible once you have the panel and then we have the fuel on the right as well so this box here can be sized wider right um, and even tilt like this and we can move it forward we can um, move it laterally so the placement is not very important right now but you can turn it on and off right like this okay now we can turn it on so with we also have DCS BIOS running okay now the viewports are very dim by default this I have to turn off and um, do the not brighten it same thing with the digital clock you can hardly see it <coughs> it's in the um, flight instruments under the light panel to brighten it even at the max is still very dim <coughs> and the RWR so all the viewports are very dim and that is not the main problem the main problem is that you can see that they are transparent the background right so <coughs> all these gauges they have even at the edges you can see it's transparent once you have it big enough to cover then you won't see the background so NMSP will be covered this will be covered by an LCD display so um, to solve this RWR and the digital clock we will need to put like an LCD or TFT um, individual display that will block it and then we use DCS BIOS code to display that individual panel uh, LCD or OLED and put it here and put it here okay that will solve the problem this one also I have a, a, a long thin single line OLED to put on it you can see this is also very dim the frequency and also transparent so all these prop all these panels with viewport are going to be transparent and we have to individually replace them so this one um, the MFDs seem to be fine I have to cut out and build a bigger um, MFD panel with the buttons as compared to the Trustmaster Kruger okay which is um, like 20% smaller so we are in active pause mode so um, you don't see anything moving but later when I turn off active pause we'll see all the gauges are moving all right I've even tested the flaps the gauges we'll see in a while so the purpose is not just to see this on a second monitor right we, we can just see it virtually directly much better the idea of mixed reality is obviously be able to see your hands and control all the switches besides the toggles but all the instrument gauges are mostly using a knob right some of them are supposed to be a potentiometer like this one um, I've re and I think this one too basically all those that by default are, are parts I've removed them and replaced with um, encoder encoder are much smaller 
in size and you can squeeze it in okay you can see here it's just enough to fit the body of the encoder so all these are encoders right this one you are supposed to turn like this up 45 degrees and down you know but there's no such switch I just use a physical toggle momentary toggle up down okay so let's test all the knobs that are that they are working uh, using this year's BIOS and then we will see when the plane flies and all the instruments will start moving all right so starting with RWR you can turn the brightness right that's the only purpose of this to turn the brightness even at max is still not very bright and obviously the transparent uh, background too so this one it's down and up okay so it was opposite by default um, thanks to somebody in discord who created a profile and they copied and I binded them so now this is working and um, the, the flag too right so it's stuck maybe I'm in pause mode okay um, <coughs> that was funny so this year's BIOS uh, crashed so things stopped working so I had to restart it so anyway um, let's continue we saw that this was working and the flag and um, this one is too dim to see so let me switch to virtual layer and also you cannot see so this one you can see it's moving right and then the course you can also see that now this one also moves okay it's correct now um, I binded something wrong so uh, this is also working this you can see this setting here is also working now let's switch um, off the pass through and I'll do the clock okay you can see you can um, this is control is working and this thing is also working the cover tends to come off okay and then this PNU thing here okay you can turn it to elect or PNU so basically all the instrument gauges in terms of controls in terms of all these physical controls are working um, now let's fly and um, turn this back on and fly and we'll see that um, the instruments Okay, we can see the bank, we can see this moving, um, the speed, the altimeter, this, these two SAI, ADI are both working, right? And then as the uh, angle of attack is going up and down, right? HSI is moving, you know, so... Um, what else this is also moving um, these are all the engine stuff okay so let's also try the flaps um, flaps will have to be I think under 250 or 200 in order to activate it okay so flat is let's see there you go see it goes up and down and then the um, fuel I'll have to I have to do this test right you can see that's moving so this is just the beginning we have um, 
starting with the instruments <coughs> and uh, let me just pause here starting with the instruments later on we will do the MFDs, um, AHCP, the flap and landing gear, the fuel quantity, um, the CMSC, of course the UFC and then the NMSP so all these are not displayed well most of it they are just switches which are uh, more straightforward and then you just place them on and then the whole front console is done and like I said in the first test video um, I'm doing it backward now most people build the left console the right console the front console so I'm working backwards okay because in operations in flying we do we spend most of the time on the UFCs and MFDs right and hotels so that is the most important thing um, so we get this working right then I will go back to the left console starting with all the switches and then the displays right we have the new ARC 210 we have the VHF, UHF, right? Then we do the right console. The A10 has so many panels, all right? And the displays, um, CMSP, CDU, they have displays and the warning, uh, three displays and a lot of switches. Um, but output to me is trickiest. You, if you're not using viewport, you need to figure out the right display to connect to and uh, figure out the code to display them right switches are straightforward push buttons toggles rotaries uh, sometimes uh, potentiometers so um, it's a lot of work but at the same time it's very uh, rewarding when things are working and especially um, the magic of mixed reality right we we see the beautiful DCS world around us right the, the the mountains the sky the sea whatever and we see our switches oh, I mean the the stuff I'm sharing here you can you can learn and do your A10 or a lot of the things are very common displays input um, all the switches and this mixed reality stuff the helio stuff are generic you can apply it to any aircraft in dcs and we have i think 15 20 of them all right so a lot of the lessons uh, learned and shared here in this channel can be applied to your own favorite um, aircraft if you are building a specific aircraft uh, cockpit all right so a lot more exciting videos coming up as we see panel by panel what to do but overall um, the biggest takeaway is mixed reality it's the future um, gone are the days where we have to pick through the nose gap of the VR to feel you know to see and touch the switches or don't do VR for the sake of being able to you know see and touch your your panels now we have the the best of both worlds when we mix virtual and and uh, pass through together you know and this will be the most immersive way to um, fly the A-10 or any other aircraft in um, DCS so lastly this combination okay this um, mixed reality stuff it even works I haven't tried BMS or explain it even works in in Microsoft flight simulator okay using open cockpit to draw any shape of any aircraft cockpit uh, and using virtual desktop um, you can um, basically have this pass through thing in your um, aircraft in, in Microsoft Flight Simulator too. Alright, so um, 
it's going to be an exciting journey. So thank you guys for watching.